we ripped out the bathroom. That's right. I just demolished the bathroom at my Palm Springs Airbnb to give it an extreme makeover. If you follow my Airbnb journey, you know that we renovated pretty much everything in this house except for the bathrooms. And the day has finally come to give one of them a makeover. But this renovation is gonna be different from all the other renovations that we've done in the house because me and my dad are gonna do almost all of it by ourselves. So follow along as I attempt to become a DIY queen that can renovate my own spaces. Let's do this. Ooh, I dropped my mask into that. Okay. Here's a look at the before, and I will say this bathroom honestly looks better in camera than it does in person. To me, it feels like a very standard rental property bathroom. They went with the classic white subway tile that is pretty timeless, but it doesn't really have the wow factor I'm looking for for a vacation rental. And a big thing is this sunken bathtub. It's quite bulky, it closes the space in, and it feels a bit dated. The shower glass ends up being at this awkward height where you have to duck to go into the shower. This is a vacation rental. This is Palm Springs. I would love to make it more of a statement. The tile I think is a good opportunity for us to make a statement, make it like some really natural ceramic tiles maybe. There are some really cool ones, so I'm excited to switch out the tile. I definitely wanna switch out the vanity. I don't love this kind of cherry espresso color. I don't think it really matches the vibe of the house. This is a very skinny vanity, and you've only got an inch on each side, so there's nowhere to put anything. So there are both things I wanna address functionally and aesthetically with this bathroom remodel. The design is gonna be really important. And luckily I have some help from some awesome Fiverr designers. If you guys aren't familiar with Fiverr, it's a website that allows you to hire freelancers from all over the world to do just about anything you need. They've got everything from logo designers to what I'm using today, interior designers, video editors, and 3D rendering artists. They have a huge variety of freelancers. So if you need something done digitally, they probably have it. So I'll show you guys the Fiverr interior designers and rendering artists I'm working with today. This first designer is Designs by Annie. She's actually based in Los Angeles and she does Zoom consultations on interior design. I thought this would be a good place to start to work through what I was thinking and help me nail down a design that I like. So Annie presented me with some ideas, some things to think about based on what I liked, links on where to buy things. I think it would be totally fine to do something different in the bathroom. Like these are cohesive elements, like the ceramic tile and the wood tones, but like they are different spaces. So you can kind of still have have that cohesive feel. I think the lighting in this room could be improved a little bit. This really helped me get an idea of a design that I like, but I'm still kind of in between two that I really love. So I'm gonna have some 3D rendering artists do a mock-up so we can see what they would look like. This first fiber seller is named Sammy. Their username is Sammy GH3. They're based in Algeria and for just $35, I can get 3D rendering. I really wanted to see what it would look like with a dark green tile and brass hardware. So she came up with a design based on that. And here's how this one ended up looking. I think that dark green tile is really cool but I'm actually really glad I got this rendering because it is making me feel like the dark green would kind of take over the space. Now that I see how it looks like in this photo, I'm kind of remembering that it's a small bathroom and the natural light isn't super great in there. I also had this designer do a version of it with a lighter green tile. We can see they use this really pretty kind of seafoam blue, almost like an olive green tile. I just Love the idea of that from the start. I've loved the idea of an olive green, maybe kind of like a teal colored tile. Okay, on to the next design. This fiber seller is Alvedis Pro, based in Indonesia and has over 500 reviews. For this one, I put together a mood board and just had them create the rendering to see how it would look. And here it is. So as you can see, it definitely looks clean and very new, but it is a little bit reminding me of how it looked before with this white tile. So they sent over quite a few angles and this is a really good quality rendering. I'm loving that I can see a lot of different point of views of the bathroom. I don't know, I'm thinking I do wanna do some colorful tile. And the last fiber designer is an interior designer who also does 3D modelings. Her name is Deborah, and she's based in Kosovo. So I asked her to just do whatever she wanted and this is what she came up with. So this bathroom is so beautiful, it's so cool. I love the shower niche. It's more of a ledge along the wall. It's very organic, modern feeling. The only thing with this bathroom is it doesn't really fit the style of the rest of the house. I would love to recreate this bathroom in a different 
home one day though because I just think it's beautiful. So a lot of great options here, but the one I decided to go with was this one. I think that this one is the winner. I'm gonna be basing this remodel off of this photo and this really pretty teal colored tile. So we have a lot of work to do. So let's get started. Okay, guys, today is the day we demo the bathroom. This is a day I've been looking forward to for a long time. My goal for this renovation was to do as much as I could myself. And demo really is the most DIY friendly thing because you can't really mess it up. Like if you're messing it up, you're actually doing it right. And it can easily be one to $2,000 for bathroom demo, probably on the higher end since we're breaking out a bathtub. So definitely saving on costs by doing it ourselves. We started with a chisel and hammer and this stuff was so stuck that the next day I bought a sledgehammer and we just completely took the walls off. And this was really the best way to do it. If you have some stubborn tiles, the sledgehammer will work wonders. All right, day two. We've gotten so much done already. The sledgehammer was such a good idea. And now my dad is gonna attempt to cut this out with a skill saw, just this whole wall. It took two days to get the tile out and then it was time to attempt the tub. Wow, we got all the walls out. This is great progress for today. It's definitely not the most glamorous job, but it honestly is kind of fun because you're seeing progress at the same time. And I felt like I got a workout in doing this, so we love that. I'm going to attempt to get out this sunken bathtub all by myself. I tried for three hours, all my energy, all my might to get this thing out. And you know, I didn't really get that far. Luckily, Monica's boyfriend, Jason, he's much stronger than I am. And he was able to get most of this demolished in like 30 minutes. Wow. And look at this, Shelby. We have a nice concrete ledge right Oh, there. sweet. So we don't even need to build anything. No, we can just we do not. pour that. Uh, uh. We had to get everything else out. So the mirror, the vanity, all of that, everything is basically just screwed in. Do so you unscrew it? Maybe you have to take a knife to anything that has caulking around it, but then it comes out pretty easily and it's very satisfying to do this. So everything is out. So a big project for us was refilling this tub. What we decided to do was lay gravel and then we poured quickcrete. This was actually pretty inexpensive and a lot easier to do than I expected. Quickcrete is only like $5 a bag and it took about six bags of it. it. Took us less than an hour to do. I thought this would be a lot more of an ordeal, but it really was not as difficult as I thought. It's kind of a two person job though, because you want someone to be stirring up the quickcrete while someone else is kind of pouring it and making sure it gets laid everywhere. And then we just made sure it was level and slightly, slightly sloped down, but mostly just level. Now that the walls are open, it's time to really get to work. We're doing some electrical and plumbing, and I have never done any of this before, but luckily my dad has. I loved the sconces in the fiber rendering, so we were gonna have to change some of the wiring for this. This whole process was actually easier than I expected. I was just thinking that. Hey, it worked! Okay, so we have, can run the wire through this hole, and then through this hole, and then into here. Sure. Cut that piece of plastic off. See the wire is through. We haven't connected it up there yet. The plumbing was a similar thing. We had to drill holes through the studs in order to fit that PEX plumbing through it. We haven't turned the water off yet and really connected everything. We'll do that tomorrow. But yeah, we're gonna have it so shower head is higher up here and the valve will not be here anymore. It will be right over here next we installed a sloping shower pan so this shower pan already slopes down so drainage should be good it is a little more expensive but worth it because that's kind of tricky to do and then we also had to install what are called furring strips because these wood studs didn't go out as much as the concrete on the ground so we needed it to install these to make sure everything was flush after that we we're able to install the hardy backer this is a very heavy mold resistant type of board so it's good to use in a shower Hour. So we got some of the hardy board in here. We had to measure and cut everything. I didn't really show that on camera. It does take a good amount of time to install this because you want to have screws in there every eight to 12 inches. I say this like I'm an expert. This is really the first time I've ever done this. But since we're laying tile on top of it, you just want to make sure everything is in there solid. So I took my time and um, yeah, got a bunch of screws in there. All right, you guys, you can see we got cement board all on this wall and this wall now with 
a hole for the shower head. Before closing up this wall, we installed some support for the floating vanity that's gonna go there. And then we put green board, which is a mold resistant kind of drywall. And same thing with this. We, I feel like we did so many screws in this. There's no way this thing is gonna fall out. Oh, what the hell? Oh no, it went all the way through. <laughs> We got this device that makes it so you don't over screw it. That is so neat. Each of these drywall strips need a little more cutting. So after we cut those pieces, we could put this drywall up and we used lipstick to mark the spots where we needed to cut holes in the drywall. You just put the lipstick on, push the drywall up against it and it kind of stamps it. And then we just cut the holes that we needed with the drywall knife. And my dad also used a multi-tool. Both of these techniques worked. Then we just hung the drywall and put a bunch of screws in it. Always making sure to screw into the studs. Right, but not like too bright, you know? I cleaned up the whole area, swept everything and vacuumed it, and then put down this waterproofing kind of stuff on the floor. This is what we're instructed to put on before we tile this. It's really pretty simple to put this on and took about 30 minutes. The next day we decided to get to cutting the floor tiles. I made a plan for this on my iPad. After measuring everything, we really wanted everything to be cut and ready before we mixed up the thin set. And this was such an exciting part. I'm just so excited to see how these look in place. So this was really fun. Before actually putting the tiles in though, we wanted to waterproof the shower. Another thing I've never done before, we taped all of the seams and applied thin sets. And this sounds really simple, but I would recommend watching a tutorial if you actually do this. You'd be surprised how long it takes to do this. But once we had it done, we could apply Red Guard, which is a waterproofing membrane. And this is really easy and fun. It's just like painting, goes on super easy. You know, I'm sure you've painted your room before. It's just like doing that. We applied two coats of Red Guard. I basically used up every last drop from the supply that we had and the shower walls were done. I'm so happy with how they turned out. No, I'm just kidding. We're gonna put tile over it, don't worry. We also had to tape and mud the drywall. Again, first time ever doing something like this. So we got the first layer on, but we do have to go back and do some more work here later. So while we let that set, we decided to mix up some thin set and start tiling. We actually started in the middle in the shower niche so that everything would line up to this and we wouldn't have to randomly cut any in the shower niche or anything like that. We custom made the niche so that these tiles would fit perfectly inside. So it's 10 inches tall. I planned all of that very purposefully. I did quite a bit of research online before we did this. We just wanted to make sure everything was level and suctioned properly. It's honestly kind of bold to put the tile on yourself because if you mess it up, you kind of would have to take the whole wall off. But we were very careful about it. And I think we did a really good job actually. Row one is just about done. So we went all the way up to the ceiling and it was so much fun to finally see the tiles on the wall. I was getting so excited. I love these tiles so much and I think it's looking so good. For the top row, we did have to cut the tiles and I was cutting these two and eighth of an inch, being very, very precise with this. Tile saw looks kind of intimidating, but it honestly is pretty easy to use. I had to cut 30 tiles. We put those all in, so that definitely took a good amount of time. And and I actually did hire a contractor to help finish the tile install. So he put in all of the floor tiles and some of the shower tiles because that shower niche was a little bit tricky and I didn't have the proper saw to do those angled cuts. This is the floor tile. It's a terrazzo looking porcelain tile. I think it looks really good and it's very, very much a thing here in Palm Springs. So the tile contractor, honestly, he was a little bit slow and I had to leave in two days. So I started to finish the job myself. We break one. The last tile, two tiles we needed in broke. It can happen when you're cutting them, a piece will chip off. I called the place that I got the tiles from, Modern Home. He said I could buy a sample off of them. Major shout out to Brett from Modern Homes. They had the peeps. Seriously, save the day letting me get this sample piece. I love that place. Definitely recommend if you're doing a renovation in Palm Springs. Good morning, everybody. It is 7.30. 
I have to leave today. I was pretty stressed because my flight was at 2 p.m. and I really needed for this to be done. My tile contractor initially told me all the tile would be done on Monday. And here it was, Wednesday morning, and I'm just doing it myself because he really barely did anything each day. It was crazy, you guys. I ended up putting up over half of all the wall tiles myself. And at this point, I realized, oh God, this is not gonna be done in time. I was just so bummed because I know the amount of work was very doable for the time frame, And I know that for a fact because I ended up doing most of it myself, which is so absurd. The tile contractor just over promised and under delivered. And honestly, that's kind of how it goes with working with contractors a lot of the time, which is exactly why I wanted to DIY this in the first place. The silver lining is I got a lot of practice tiling and grouting things myself that I otherwise wouldn't have. And now I feel like moving forward, I could totally do this myself. So while it was pretty frustrating in the moment. In the end, it kind of turned out to be a good thing. So after that, we started to place in the vanity, the mirror, and the sconces. We were able to really pull things together in this last hour. As I was throwing everything in my suitcase, my dad and the tile contractor started putting the shower glass in. I was so sad I couldn't help do the last finishing parts of it, but I was really happy with how things were turning out. So I had to catch my flight. My dad and the tile contractor finished up everything else. And without further ado, here is how it all turned out out. So here is how it turned out. I'm so happy with it. I think the tile choice is beautiful. It's also really cool to see how it is compared to the fiber rendering. I think I did a pretty accurate job. I just changed a little things like the hardware color, but having the rendering was very helpful in making those decisions. Mainly helped me pick the tile color. That was kind of the biggest decision. We do have a couple of areas to still grout and put a couple tiles in, but for the most part, it is finished. Shout out to my dad for getting these video clips because I had to leave and i gotta say the process of this really was so rewarding and i'm so glad that we did most of this ourselves not just because it's way cheaper but because it was so fun every day working on this i woke up so excited and motivated it reminded me of when i very first started making youtube videos i learned so much and i feel so empowered like i can totally tackle more home renovation projects so yeah, my i think i'm a diy queen now Okay, so that is the full video. I hope that you guys enjoyed watching. I want to thank my dad, of course, for helping me so much with this. And I also want to thank Fiverr for sponsoring this video and talk to you guys about how you could also potentially work with Fiverr through their influencer program. So like I said, Fiverr has an influencer program and they work with various different creators from micro to mid-size audiences. So you don't need to have millions of subscribers to work with them. They have quite a few different types of partnership plans that they do from one-time partnerships to more long-term ambassadorships. And when you're working with them, you get some really cool tools. So you get Fiverr credits that you can spend on services. You can get custom promo codes for your audience and you also get compensated when you make a sale. And they also sponsor dedicated videos like this one so they can sponsor a one-time video like this. The application process is really fast and easy. I'll have a link to it down below. If you are a creator, you should definitely check it out because I have had such a great experience working with them on so many videos now. I think I've worked with them on like four different videos. Okay, that is gonna be it for this video. I hope that you guys liked it. Don't forget to give it a like and subscribe if you wanna see more home renovation type videos. I might do more. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye.